we want to compare these two graphs, the graphs of y equals x to the second and y equals x to the fourth, look at some similarities and differences, and then hopefully uh, make some generalizations about these functions. So remember, these are both considered power functions because they just have one term, and it's x raised to a power. And more specifically, they're also polynomial power functions because the exponents are whole numbers. So we have, let's see, x squared here and x to the fourth. So the two and the four, the exponents, because they are whole numbers, that's what makes them polynomial functions as well as power functions. Something else that we know about both of them right off the bat, hopefully you can figure out their domain. What kind of values are you allowed to substitute into these functions? And there's no restrictions, so we expect to have a domain of all real numbers for both. So we'll start by just analyzing the two functions numerically, meaning we'll make a quick table of values. And, and hopefully you have an idea already of what y equals x squared looks like. So if you need that refresher, yes, you can make the table. So negative 2 squared will give us positive 4. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. And then we should get 0, 1, and 4 for those other outputs. And then when we plot those points, hopefully there's no surprise in what this, this parabola looks like. Now, I'm going to actually space out my tick marks on my grid here. I'm going to go every other tick mark because that's just going to let me uh, compare these two graphs a little more closely. You might want to do the same. So negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4 are those common points on the parabola. Now I'm not going to connect the dots just yet because first I'd like to go over here to y equals x to the fourth and analyze this function numerically so we can take a look at the similarities and the differences. So starting negative 2 to 2, as we did before. This time, though, when we take negative 2, we're raising it to the fourth power, so that's going to give us a much larger y value of 16. Negative 1 to the fourth is positive 1. You can continue your table. And I'll plot those points also going, again, every other just so I can kind of zoom in near the origin a little bit. So my tick marks here. And uh, we'll plot those points. Now, negative 2, 16 obviously is, is way off my, my, uh, my grid here. So we know that that would be you know, way up high, much higher than, than the point over here, the corresponding point on y equals x squared, which was negative 2, 4. So that's okay, it's off my grid, no problem. Let's go ahead and plot the ones that we can. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1 can certainly be graphed. So right here, we should see immediately some commonalities. We see that both of these functions share the three points, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So if you hadn't included any other values in your table, you might make the mistake of thinking that these actually are the same graph because they do share three points. However, they're, they're indeed going to be different graphs. So let's start by looking at what's happening on the outside, away from the origin. So again, for the parabola, we see, try again, that when x is negative 2, y is 4, whereas for y equals x to the fourth, when x is negative 2, we get a much larger y value. So what that means is as we are growing here on my parabola, it's going to reach positive 4 and then grow. Both left and right is going to positive infinity. However, on y equals x to the fourth, yes, it's growing, but it's going to be growing much more quickly. I'm going all the way up to positive 16. So graphically, that means you should have a steeper, a steeper graph both on the left and the right because it's growing more rapidly. So now we want to take a look at what's happening closer to the origin between negative 1 and 1. So that's going to require me actually to continue my table of values and take a look at some fractions for my x values between negative 1 and 1. 
So let's just start with the positives. What would happen if we're looking at, say, x is 1 half? So we would take 1 half, 1 half squared is going to be 1 fourth. Whereas for my function y equals x to the fourth, when I input one half, one half to the fourth power would be one sixteenth. I get a much smaller y value. So now when I plot those points, notice the difference graphically. Going to y equals x squared, when x is one half, my y value is a fourth. Whereas on y equals x to the fourth, when x is one half, my y value is one sixteenth. It's just barely, do that better, it's just barely above the x-axis. Super, super, super small, very close to the x-axis. And of course, the same would be true on the other side. If we were to look at negative one half, negative one half squared is one fourth, as well as negative one half to the fourth power would be positive one sixteenth. Remember, both of these functions will have y-axis symmetry, so hopefully no surprise that we would be getting a mirror image point on the other side. So what's happening then in between negative 1 and 1, if you look at y equals x to the 4th, it's still going to be that nice u-shape. However, it's going to be flatter. It's getting much closer to the x-axis here in between negative 1 and 1 as opposed to our nice parabola shape. Okay, so that higher power, when we look at these fractional, these fractional inputs, like one half or negative one half, you see these very small outputs. The higher power results in very, very small y values, which causes the graph to be much closer to the x-axis. So our similarities, uh, we have the same end behavior. So if we were to take a look at our, our end behavior for both of these functions, let's review how we'd write that. So our end behavior, we can say for both functions, as x goes to negative infinity, meaning the left side of the graph, the left behavior, is that my y values continue to grow. So the y values also go to positive infinity in both directions. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. And then as x goes to positive infinity, which is that right behavior, y also rises and gets indefinitely larger. So y would go to positive infinity. So they share in behavior. They share the same domain. So we said the domain would be all real numbers. They also share the same range, what kind of numbers we're getting out. We're getting out numbers from 0 to infinity, positive numbers as well as 0. So they also have those common three points. We know that they have in common negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Those three points are shared on both graphs. Now in terms of differences, the differences are going to occur in between negative 1 and 1. So the higher the exponent, this was y equals x to the fourth, then I call this the flatter the graph. The graph is getting closer to the x-axis. So we have a flatter graph when we are between negative 1 and 1. Between x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1, the graph is going to be flatter, closer to the x-axis when you have the higher exponent. And then the other difference is going to be, of course, on the outer edges. We know that the function is growing more quickly, or the graph rises more quickly due to the higher exponent. So those y values are increasing rapidly. I'll just write the graph rises more quickly. It rises more quickly due to the higher power, the higher exponent. Now I also want you to see that the same is going to be true if we have an odd power or odd exponents. So looking at y equals x cubed, we know we could expect to have negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1 on that graph. And y equals x to the fifth, 
would also share those same three common points. However, the differences, again, are going to start to lie when we take a look at the values close to the origin. So once again, if we just take a look numerically here at what's happening, say, at y equals 1 half, so 1 half cubed will be 1 eighth, whereas over here, for y equals x to the fifth, when we input 1 half, 1 half to the fifth power is going to be 1 over 32, 1 32nd. So you see we're getting this much smaller y value compared with our y value of 1 8. 1 over 32 is a much smaller number. So once again, graphically then, when we're at x equals 1 half, over here on y equals x to the fifth, its graph, we're very, very close to that x-axis. It's really hugging it. And then we're not quite as close when you look at y equals x cubed. So we would have a nice S shape for both of them. Something like that. However, again, for y equals x to the fifth, it's going to come up here and it's going to be flatter. It's going to get closer to that x-axis when we're looking at the values right in here, right in between negative 1 and 1. It's going to be a flatter graph. And then again, notice that it is going to be rising more rapidly because if we did put in an x value of 2 for both of our tables, we know that 2 to the 5th power will be 32, so that's going to be the behavior of growing very rapidly for y equals x to the 5th, whereas y equals x cubed would just have a y value of positive 8. So it is growing here, of course, but it's not going to grow quite as rapidly as y equals x to the 5th. So the higher the exponent, the flatter the graph is going to be in here between negative 1 and 1, and then the steeper the graph is going to be on the ends as it's growing more rapidly.